Okay, uh, good morning everybody. Yeah, my name is Wim Morgan, uh, Assistant PVC for Teaching and Learning, and it's a great pleasure to welcome you all here today. Thank you very much for coming along, both physically and virtually, for those of you out in the world that I can't see. So, uh, great pleasure to be here. Now, as you probably realise, I'm, I'm getting to an age now where uh, one of the problems I have is that my hearing's starting to go. So, when my PA said to me, we'd really like you to introduce Mel C. I thought, fantastic. <laughs> You're going to be doing the Spice Girls. Well, oh, great. But no, I was actually more pleased when I discovered, no, it was my hearing that was going. It was actually Mel C that I was introducing. So it is a great pleasure to be with you today. And it's a great pleasure on two, two grounds. One is a very personal pleasure because uh, I've been involved with what we used to call technology-enabled learning. Uh, for a number of years now, way back in 2006, I was made the university's director of e-learning. Do you remember when we used to call it that, e-learning? Uh, and as a consequence, I've been involved in what the university's been trying to do in terms of e-learning, technology-enabled learning, media-enhanced learning, whatever we want to call it, for a, quite a long time now. I'm also still a practicing lecturer, so I still... I'm engaged in the classroom, and I've been using and have made great use of uh, media technologies to support my delivery, but also the students' learning. And I can see there are huge benefits with that. There are pitfalls as well, but there are huge benefits, and I've seen the way in which my students have engaged with materials online, engaged with video, engaged with podcasts, etc., to support what they're doing and support their learning, and that's tremendously exciting. <coughs> That's a very specific and personal uh, link. More broadly, I think, is what the university is doing. I think the university, to be fair to it, um, has been involved in this area for a number of years and has been doing some quite exciting things. And there's a huge number of things that are going on. We've not got them all right, but there are lots of things that we're doing which I think are really quite exciting to support the student experience and to support us as academics in doing what we want to do and enhance the learning experience for students. Not surprisingly, uh, we're going through a process of renewal in terms of our teaching and learning. We're going through a big program of teaching transformation at the moment, which involves all schools and all professional services. And one of the strands within that is, in fact, around media-enhanced learning. It's all about how can we engage with video, how can we engage with audio, how can we engage with synchronous work between students and staff to support their learning. It's a central plank of what we're doing in trying to think about how we enhance our teaching and learning at the university. There's also, as we are sitting in an environment in which we currently are, uh, a focus on capturing the classroom experience, the lecture capture, if you like. This is something we are trying to develop. Uh, it's a system we have in place at the moment. It's very much opt-in. But what we're seeing is this huge demand for this particular service, not, not only from students. Students are very keen on lecture capture, but we're seeing a, a number of academic colleagues engaging in this, and we want to see what that means for the lecture experience, but also what it means for the blended experience as well. How can it change the in-classroom experience? How can it support learning? And how can we do this systematically across all campuses and in all spaces? The, uh, the other area that we have been engaging with is uh, the use of Kaltura to support the publishing of uh, rich media much more readily for our students and for our staff. And I think that, that too is a growing area of demand for our colleagues. I think it's, it's one that's quite new, but nevertheless it is actually proving to be quite uh, versatile in supporting what academics want to do, uh, making publication much more easy. And I think that's one of the, the challenges we do face as academics is that we don't necessarily have the time to learn a great deal, but if we can do things very simply, then we'll probably engage with it. Uh, one of the areas we've also been involved with for a number of years, uh, and I was involved in the, the start of this, uh, I think in 2008, was making a lot of our materials open to the wider world, our teaching materials. We've been very much uh, keen to publish our teaching materials on the open net, and our Open Nottingham project has been a key part of our work over the last six, six years or so. So we've been involved in iTunes U, we've been involved in YouTube, etc., and we've had our own U Now site for a number of years. And this was all a precursor for MOOCs and NOOCs in many ways. This is, this is where we were involved in that open courseware space, which in many ways has morphed into 
the MOOC and NUC area. Now you're saying to me, some of you from outside, what the heck's a NUC? Well, a NUC is our very own local uh, application of the MOOC idea. The MOOC, as probably you all know, is uh, for everybody to engage in. The NUC, as its name might suggest, is the Nottingham Open online course, which perhaps sounds like an oxymoron if you're having it open, but it's only open to Nottingham people. But nevertheless, that's what we've called it, and we've even trademarked it. So. <laughs> uh, and, and essentially, this was really important to us because it gave us a chance to trial the sort of MOOC activities, but in a closed environment. Because the other dimension that you're probably aware of is that we are an international institution, that we have campuses in China and Malaysia. And what the NUC has allowed us to do is to put in contact <coughs> with each other students from across different countries and from across courses that are actually taking common courses but are being taught in different countries. And it's put them in touch with each other in a way that we couldn't do in a face-to-face -face environment. We clearly can't. Uh, and that NUC has enabled us to develop our MOOCs in a much more fruitful way than perhaps we might have done otherwise. So having that space to experiment and having that space to learn with our own students and our own staff has been hugely, hugely helpful. And what that's done is that it's enabled us to think about that, the nature of online learning, and what we've really learned, if nothing else, that less is more. And that the less you put into these spaces, the more you get in interaction with the students, the more they're engaged, and the more you facilitate as opposed to provide materials, resources, etc. And that's been hugely helpful to us in thinking about our blended learning in the face-to-face -face environment. So that's been really quite exciting. And then uh, the only other area I just want to um, identify is that we have been uh, really thinking about technology-enabled technology learning to support all that we do, uh, not as a leading edge thing, but as a support for what we do. I think that's an important message that certainly I try and promote when I go out to, to talk to academic schools, is that this is not about, here's a technology, how can we use it? It's all about, what are you trying to do in the teaching and learning space? Is technology an answer? If so, how can we <coughs> apply it? I think that's a really important message for academic colleagues who are not well versed necessarily in what they can and can't do with technologies. You do get lots of colleagues who see shiny technology and say, I want this, I want to do this, what can I do with it? Which is not the right starting point. And you get frustration and you can get resistance. Which is unfortunate, we've tended to try and work away from that and I think we are tending to do so. And as we get newer and newer academics through who are much more familiar with the world anyway, that resistance is starting to diminish. So, I think it's fair to say that we're doing lots like I'm sure lots of you are in other institutions, we certainly don't have all the answers. Uh, and I wouldn't want to stand here and say we know everything. We clearly don't. But we are trying and we want to find out more. And this is why events like this are really important. So we can share ideas, share experiences, share just a general sense of what we can and can't do. I think that's really important. So I hope that you get a lot from today. I hope that you get a great deal of interaction. I hope that you get a chance to find out what you want to do, what you want to uh, explore. And I think in the, in the words of Mel C, I hope you find out what you really, really want. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So can I wish you the best of luck for the rest of the day and uh, good luck with it all. And thanks for coming to Nottingham. Thank you.